Hey, hello everyone. My name is Jesse Brizendine and welcome back to another edition of A Handful of Hope. I'm so happy and grateful to have Josh with us today. And Josh is a former professional magician of 10 years who switched his area of expertise and focus to doing digital marketing. Specifically, he helps digital agencies help small business. And he's done trainings for others all over the world on how to make money online. To date, there's thousands of people that have used Josh's methodologies, teachings, and tips to really create a business or scale an online business and harnessing the amazing power of the internet to do things digitally and generate an income for themselves. What Josh does is he help people he helps people connect the dots and get the right offer in front of the right people. And I think Josh, what you're going to share with us today is at such an important time. So thank you so much for being here and being willing to share with all of us. It's my pleasure, Jesse. Thank you for having me. So Josh, and just we'll define this really quick because Josh wants to speak to two different groups yeah. of people right now and we'll have two paths. So we'll start with the one that will segue the other. The two paths we're going to go on is people who currently have a business and then we're going to segue over to people who don't have a business but want to try to jump online and utilize the internet. So let's start with business owners first, Josh. We're in this great time of disruption and a lot of uncertainty, a lot of things changing. What are some things, some practical things that business owners should be doing right now or they could be doing that they may not be aware of? Yeah, so this is this has been a, a hot topic question as of late, uh, for sure. And uh, what my advice has been uh, most generally in this case, every business owner is facing their own challenges and they're very aware of what those are. Um, Certainly financial impacts are happening, um, impacts with employees, and uh, some, a lot of people are facing whether or not they're going to have to shut the doors. So sometimes those things take a priority in our minds. But what I've been telling everybody is don't, uh, don't lose connection with your audience. Uh, this is a time where you have a way to communicate what it is that you do, and most importantly, who you are, what your heart is. Uh, in a different way than you've ever had the ability to do before. Uh, there's two reasons. One, everybody is on social media right now. And if you're finding yourself slow, there's two things you should be doing in your business. One, you should be learning how to grow that business through digital marketing methods. Because if something like this ever happens again, um, and, and even if it doesn't, you'll benefit from understanding those dynamics and, and putting some of those things in place. And that could be social media. I talk to a lot of business owners that are very uncertain of what to do with social media, this is a time to start to get certain about it. Nobody's going to judge you for doing anything uh, out of character or you're not under intense scrutiny in this particular time, especially if you're coming from a place of caringness and heart. So what I've been telling people is find a way to align with something that's charity minded. Now that doesn't mean align with a charity specifically, but something that you're doing to help the community. Reach out with your heart, with connection, with a, a purpose of sorts, and document everything you're doing that way. Maybe it's nothing more than just following up with customers, going through your list, giving them a phone call, say, hey, uh, this is Joe from Joe's Automotive. Uh, we just wanted to call, make sure that you're doing well through this particular time. Uh, if you have any needs, you know, we'll, we'll come and pick up your, your vehicle and, and get it repaired for you. Um, we're also, some of the employees are volunteering to do some grocery stuff after hours and, and so on and so forth. But we want to make sure that you're doing good, let you know that we're thinking about you during this time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, all business aside, we just want you to be safe and that sort of thing. And what you might do is before you sit down to make those phone calls is do a Facebook live video on your social media pages. And um, uh, well, specifically Facebook in this case. So you'd go live and you just say, hey guys, it's Joe here uh, from Joe's Automotive and we're, we're sitting down uh, with the employees today. We're actually gonna reach out, call a bunch of our customers just to say thank you for being a customer, see how they're doing through this thing and let them know that we're thinking about them. Uh, we support them through the situation and offer an extending hand if we're able to help in some way. Um, and we just wanted to go live because we know that a lot of you, uh, maybe you're not on our call list or um, uh, not been a customer with us, and that's totally okay, but we want you to know that we wish you the best as well. And if there's anything else we can help anybody out there in the world with, we're here with you in this, this sort of thing. And documenting the journey of doing those things, if you're, it doesn't matter, if, if you go outside to sweep the parking lot because you're bored, tell a story. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, this, it's funny, the parking lot is so 
clean right now, or, or it's, it's dirty and I'm getting it clean and I'm getting a whole bunch of things around the shop cleaned up, but it reminds me, uh, one of the projects we had last year was one of the messiest things we ever did. We actually had a Ford come in and the transmission was broken and just tell the story and be, um, be a source of something interesting and positive for people to look at. And if you're constantly doing those things, it's really hard for people to lose awareness of you, which they may very well do in the midst of all of this stuff because we got better things to do than pay attention to what businesses are doing. But that better thing is social media. And if you're telling social media stories, you're going to stand out in some important way. So that's been my you know, sort of compartmentalized advice uh, thus far. I love that, Josh, and I think it's it's such a it's such a simple but powerful notion, right? Really, like getting business owners to almost care enough to care more during this time, and it's getting out of that me and getting into the we. We were talking a little bit of that offline. So, if I'm a business owner, which I am, and I'm on social media a lot, which I am, and I want to I want to start telling more stories about this. What are what are some of the elements for a business owner of a good story? Like what makes it what's it makes a good story? So maybe a business owner who's not as familiar with social media as you or I are, and I don't want to pretend like I have anywhere near your knowledge of it, but you know, what are those elements of a story? So if I'm gonna go after right after this and I want to create one, what would I be looking for? Yeah, so one of the things that's really hard to do is look at our own environment and think that it's interesting to anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but inherently, very interesting, right? Uh, that's why behind the scenes stuff is so powerful. So um, if, if you have, uh, you know, I was using an automotive shop as an example. Um, if, if you have an automotive shop, you might do a quick behind the scenes tour and tell the story of why you chose this layout this way and why this, this works. Uh, in some fashion, if you're, say, a hair salon or something, um, you can tell the story of your your best or worst moments, or the the uh, the best stories are the ones where like you've conquered something. So hmm. I remember when I was starting out in in the hair industry, and uh, my teacher was was there just looming over my shoulder while every hair that I cut, I was so nervous. And I started there and I ended up practicing. It took me, you know, 60 or 70 haircuts to get really, really comfortable with this whole idea. And of course, now I'm able to do it uh, all the time. And what I'm most proud of is being able to do it while being very conversational with, with my clientele. In fact, I had a conversation the other day about such and such, and it was such a random thing, but uh, it, it, that's, you know, that's part of why I love this hair salon industry. So your passions as it relates to a particular customer and look for the things that you think wouldn't be all of that interesting and then look at it through fresh eyes. Say, if I told you the story about this comb, it wouldn't be interesting. And I bet you there's a thousand stories that a comb in a hair salon could tell, right? And you mm. kind of have to feel that out a little bit. Mm. And the most important thing is you want to tell the story like you're telling it to your best friend not to a bunch of strangers. You, you want to tell it with the detail, with the enthusiasm. You want to be you. Um, you're just you in front of a camera. And sometimes that's really sort of intimidating to people, but there's no better time for you to get past that because once you do, it becomes a valuable marketing tool ongoing. I, I was looking off camera because I was making a note as you're talking of writing down for me, make a video of telling a story. Because it, it, what you were saying and how you said it resonated so much. I, I will often get so into giving tools that I will sometimes forego giving the giving substance from me because exactly what you said, what you said resonated so much. I look at my day to day life. And I don't think it's that interesting. And then I'm thinking in just the setup I have right now. So I literally have a, a laptop, you know, we're all doing these makeshift things. So I have a laptop propped up on a pillow with two chairs, with a light over there, with a microphone over here. And I was thinking, you know, that might be actually kind of interesting for people to see and see, oh, this is what it, you don't have to do much to do an interview. But for me, when I think of myself, I think, I think, you know, it's just not that interesting. So is it helpful for business owners to almost take off their own hat and put on the hat of the perception as if through your customer's eyes? 
Yeah, like what if what if a a six year old was walking into the room right now? What would they be looking at and picking up and touching and playing with? Hmm. Like we were all there. There's an inner six year old in all of us, and that's you know stories are are inherently powerful in our world. That's movies. That's books. That's everything. That's entertainment is story based, and uh, it doesn't matter if you don't think it's interesting. Like what you just talked about with your whole setup. Um, I think that's a really great story to tell and kind of give your reason why and, and, you know, talk about the whole project. And when you really put it into a marketing context, which is what a business owner is most interested in at the end of the day is, is how can I keep my business going because of these bigger sort of concerns? Um, this, the current statistic is something like every customer online needs to be touched seven to nine times with your content in some way before they're going to, really engage with you in a meaningful way. And each one of those little story things that can go out that somebody can see is just another connecting point. And if you think about it like uh, uh, casting another line into the water to catch a fish, well, the more lines you have in the water, the more chances you have to catch a fish. So mm -hmm. if you use these stories and think about them as lures for more business, but you're doing it in a way that's not a promotion for your business, you're doing it in a way to connect at a personal level with your business because you know the old adage uh, it's it's not about what you know it's about who you know well that holds true with your customers as well the best customer you can have is somebody who feels a sense of of kind of knowing you or at least has an affinity towards you um, your offer isn't it, you know in this world there's so many people doing so many things it's rare that you see an offer that's so unique that that just drives business people also mm -hmm. want to do business with people they like and this is a way for you to show them who the, who you are that's absolutely incredible, Josh. I'm, I'm making a pledge to you right now that I am going to do some story-based stuff before we even put this video out to be recorded. And those of you who are watching this now, and if you've seen me doing some story-based videos lately, we are going to attribute credit to Josh because it's just, it's, you know, <clears throat> logically I get it, but how you're explaining it emotionally, I feel it. And I think that's really yeah. powerful. It's, it's it's getting it out of here and getting it into here. And I feel like for me and my business, I'm so here that a lot of times I'll struggle with stuff up here because it's just, it doesn't seem like it resonates as much. Let's shift gears now. So we have the other avatar, right? So we the, I think those are such great starting points. I know the, the small business owners and the business owners are going to be, wait, why didn't you keep talking to Josh? We want to hear more. But I know there's this whole other group of people out right now who has experienced this massive disruption. They may have a lot of uncertainty with their job. Maybe they've lost their job and they realize how fragile and unstable that could be. And so they're looking at ways to how can they, how can they make some extra money or maybe they could even start their own business. And here they are and they're getting ready to immerse themselves in the digital world, but there is so much terminology. There's so many different platforms. And the thing that keeps them from doing something is they don't know where to start. Let's talk to that person a little bit. Where would you, where would you advise them to go? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, um, you're, you're absolutely right in that it's a big, uh, it's a big world out there in the digital space. Um, way too many avenues. Everybody says everything is important and it's, it's very overwhelming. Um, if you're in this, if, if you're in this category, uh, the first thing that you need to do, in my opinion, is really look at, a couple of things about yourself. Uh, what are you really good at and what are you really smart with? And those two things that you already have inside of you are the things that can start to push into a, a new direction with something online. So let's just leave it as this arbitrary something at the moment. And let's say that you're good at, um, you're, you're, you're a good communicator, you're a good speaker of, of some sort and people listen to you when you talk. Maybe that's your skill set. Um, perfect, then social media is probably a really good angle for you to, to approach. Um, and what you might do in that case is exactly the same thing I just mentioned to do for the business owner. You'd start telling stories and talking about your experiences with anything and see if you get people to, to engage and listen and learn the, the key pieces to engagement and you'll, you'll be able to start to hone that skill very, very quickly because Everybody's on social media, not just now, but in general. And that means there's a huge bunch of people to give you the right feedback to tell you which way to go, mm -hmm. right? So uh, 
what you might do is start putting out that content while also asking people around you, hey, what do you think I'd be good at doing? What do you think I'd be good at uh, um, producing? What kind of online business could I or should I start? Um, so if you're a communicator that way, uh, definitely exploring social media is a good way. And you might go, well, how do I monetize that? And that's a really a very big conversation. Uh, but online marketing equates to two things, traffic and an offer. If you're going to make money online, you just have to have the right traffic to the right offer. It's a very simple equation, quite honestly. Um, but it can be a complex path to get there, especially if you look at every path with googly eyes and go, I want to learn that, and that, and that, and that, and that, yeah. and get lost in this learning thing. So what's best to do is um, look at being able to harness traffic properly. Then ask that traffic what's important to them. So let's say that you're a communicator and you're talking about um, your, uh, you're talking about, say you love electronics and you're just talking about different electronics and you're kind of reviewing some pieces out there and going, hey, I just, you know, I've got this new microphone or something, wanted to tell people about it and, and let you know this thing is super, super cool. Um, you can leave what's called an affiliate link. You can go to Amazon and sign up for their affiliate program and you can just Google uh, affiliate programs or Amazon affiliate program and you'll see the the methodology to sign up for them and you can leave a link to that microphone at the bottom of your post and it's an affiliate link if somebody wants to go buy it they would buy it and you would get a commission on that mm -hmm. right so as long as you understand what the traffic wants which it, it's it, it can be a big conversation but the first step is getting out there in front of traffic and getting their attention you have that you can now direct them into a particular place but I don't want to leave the people who are not necessarily the communicators, the people who would be very uh, uh, uncertain about doing what I just said, and they might not take action because that's uh, a, a little bit of a thing. Then what you might look into is e-commerce solutions, right? Where you can run and manage a store that doesn't require your personality to be out in front of it, but it can be your product that can be out in front of it. Now you're still going to have to do marketing and you're still, it's best to tell stories, um, but it doesn't always have to be you doing it. Maybe you can get a friend that's really good at telling stories to hop on and make an ad for, for your e-commerce store about your new t-shirt that you're selling or your new widget or whatever. Um, the key to it is finding a way to be as resourceful as you have to be within the space that you're working. Um, but just getting that initial decision to start working, the best thing you can do is just get used to harnessing traffic however you can. And if you're the non-technical or if you're the non-communicative type, you might go ask people those same questions. You know, what am I good at? What do you think I'd be a good? What would be a good product? When you ask enough people what would be good and you start to get a consensus and people start saying, I really like this idea, that's what you go with. But it involves you talking to the people that are closest to you and the people uh, that you communicate with online. Make a post on Facebook. Hey guys, I'm really thinking about starting uh, an online adventure. There's a few options I'm considering, not sure where to go. Um, here's the initial thoughts I'm thinking. L would love your ideas on anything else that you've seen that you think I might be good at doing, mm. right? People might answer, they might not. If they don't, wait a couple days and ask the question again. The Facebook algorithm uh, or any social media algorithm, sometimes posts just don't get engagement. So do it at a different time, do it at a different day. Uh, private message people if you have to, but gather that insight so you have the confidence to go look for a way to get in front of that traffic. And the last piece that applies to both of these groups of people is in this, this I can't stress enough, and I, I know you're in line with this thinking as, as well, Jesse, is find the right person online to follow. Um, anytime you can get a mentor, even if it's virtual, getting the right mentor, somebody that resonates with you, somebody that's uh, got real proof behind their stuff. Like it's not, uh, um, it, it's not fluff. You can see testimonials. You, they're, you know, you can private message them or email their support and talk to people. Uh, it can be a little hard to, to know who to trust online sometimes. Um, but get involved with a place where lots of other people are involved and get involved with somebody that can coach either with training, um, uh, direct one-on-one -on -one coaching, which can be a little more expensive, but very, very powerful. Um, or uh, just follow their free stuff, even if you're not buying the training. Lots of people are giving away all sorts of free things right now. And uh, that's another Facebook post. Hey guys, I'm looking for a great course on X, Y, or Z. 
thinking about doing these things. Maybe it's e-commerce, affiliate marketing, whatever. What do you guys recommend? And um, then the, the last most powerful piece to this, and this is where all of the gold is made in my mind, is you join Facebook groups and you work your butt off to provide as much value to that group as you can in terms of supporting other people, in terms of finding other resources that might be helpful, in terms of um, uh, reaching out when somebody has a question, being, some, being one of the dominant people there to answer that question for people, stand out in those communities, and you'll start to draw that attention to yourself from a very positive way. It's a very forward-giving, value-driven way of communicating online. And I've built everything that I've built on that one strategy of being mm. as resource, as much of a resource as I can be to other people in groups. So I hope that gives some ideas anyways. It's more complex than maybe what we have time to go into. You know, it could be hours of conversation, but to get started, I think those are good tips. Yeah, Josh, there's a couple of things I want to clarify real quick because that was so much great information. <clears throat> and I just want to distill it down to some steps for folks. Because what I love that how you just laid it out is you laid out all these different options for people, which is so helpful because it, it brings to attention that there's more than one way in this instance. So first of all, traffic you're defining as is, is, is people who are coming and seeing your content, right? So it, it, whether it's people on your friends list, for example, or it might be something that, I know you recently shared one of my posts, right? And so then when you shared that post, it went to people on your list. And so that would be traffic, right? People that you know that I don't necessarily know, but all of a sudden they're seeing my content, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. And then- and anytime, anytime you have eyeballs on your stuff is traffic, yeah. Okay, okay, so traffic would be that. And then I love that it's as simple as and I had forgotten all about the Amazon affiliate links, but literally anyone right now could go over to Amazon, sign up for an affiliate link. It's free, right? As long as you have an Amazon account and you go and, and we could type in like, let's say we're typing in pens or something like that. And you, you like to handwrite and these, these pens are the types of pens you like to use. So you could go into that pen and type in pen, you know, that name, and then Amazon will give you a link and you click, uh, Get the URL for email, right? So it's not the huge big code, but it's just like one little line. And then you can go to your Facebook page and say, hey, everyone, you've been asking about which pens I like to write with. These are the pens. Paste it. And then when somebody clicks on that link and goes and buys it, you will get a commission from that, right? Now, here's what's awesome about this uh, that uh, people in the, in the affiliate world know for sure, but people who aren't don't. That affiliate link, um, I believe it's still 24 hours. Whatever they buy from Amazon within that 24 hour period, you get a commission on. So it's not just the one product, it's whatever ends up in a shopping cart. So that's, that turns into a really powerful tool where it can you know, sort of snowball and provide some extra income for sure. And, th and that's huge because anyone can do that and that whole process literally takes five minutes to set up probably, right? If that. So it's very cool. I want you all to really grasp this right now because one of the challenges when we're in these great times of uncertainty is when we're, when we're feeling fear, frustration, stress at high levels, which many of us are, it puts us in this state of feeling very helpless. Like we're powerless, there's nothing to do. And one of the things I hope, and, and a lot of that can be driven by feeling like I'm losing my job, I've lost my job, where am I gonna get money? And I hope that you're all listening to what Josh is saying right now, that there are options and opportunities that literally can take less than five minutes. And the great thing about it is, is it's passive in the sense of once you do it and put it up there. And I know people who they were making, I, well, there's one guy I remember following early on, uh, John Chow. He has got like one of the biggest blogs in the world. This guy, it, it's such an extraordinary example of what can be possible, right? He's a he immigrated over from Chinese or China and he his he still speaks with a very heavy Chinese accent and he was he's making millions in basically affiliate links because now his blog has gotten to be so big that people will pay to advertise there so I think again the point is is you don't have to be brilliant you don't have to have a computer science background or anything like that you can literally be as simple as going to Amazon putting your name putting your email in 
control C for copying or Apple C, whatever your device is, and then hopping over to Facebook or something and control V like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it can be that simple. And um, it, we won't go too far down this road. But uh, one of the things that can be really useful for people in uh, sort of an easy place to find traffic is based on niches. So like you might find people who are into gardening, right? We can go to a website called clickbank.com. And Clickbank has courses that are you're able to sell as an affiliate for all sorts of different niches. So now you can go build yourself uh, a little bit of uh, some authority within one of these Facebook groups. You can say, hey, I just discovered this awesome product, affiliate link, and now anybody who buys through that, you might make $10, you might make $1,000. There's some offers on there that make you can make thousands of dollars selling one or two copies of, of uh, a product. So you don't need to, you know, one of those products, you sell one a month, you got an extra $1,000 a month in income. Um, the last piece I will give you on the affiliate side of things is there are some legalities. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't give legal advice, but uh, you do have to disclose that if you drop a link that it, you may receive a commission if somebody makes a purchase through it. That's a, a typical thing that everybody would want to do to protect themselves from any FTC sort of things. Um, and if you do any searching on Google on affiliate marketing, you'll definitely find a lot of those um, uh, people who put those in blogs and all of the best practices sort of stuff. So. Josh, I have so much I want to ask you about this. I feel like we could have a full thing where we talk for maybe 10 hours on this topic right now, but in the interest of time, I'll, I'll, three yeah. questions to ask. So people are at home right now. They're self-isolated. They're locked down, sheltering, and placing. And when they're not either working on integrating for the business owners, the stuff you talked about, or they're not looking at maybe coming up with some creative income streams for the people who are going online for the first time in generating income, they have some time, and if you could recommend one podcast people listen to, what would that be? So one podcast, um, This I hope this doesn't sound cliche, my favorite podcast is Joe Rogan, hands down. Um, I think uh, it's, it's a really, um, you know, it's, it's got his slant on things, but he seems to be as even keeled on, on subjects as somebody can be and he's got a lot of really interesting guests scientists uh um you know authors and comedian like oh just a huge diverse range of guests so if you're not listening to joe rogan uh that's definitely something that uh um you know it's it's the most pop i think it's the most popular podcast in the world so maybe it's a little weird to say that but that is my favorite um if I was to give one that is uh, slightly less than that and very helpful based on what we're talking about, there's a gentleman named Alex Sharfin, and he has a podcast called The Entrepreneurial Personality Type. And uh, it's literally a, a study and, and information about this entrepreneurial personality type and some of the things that entrepreneurs face as pressure and sensitivity to noise in the world and these different things that are, it's truly a psychological, based on a psychological profiling of, of sorts, quote unquote, um, great information. He's a, a, a really great resource. Um, I've seen him speak numerous times on stage and that would be uh, another great one for anybody looking to get further into their entrepreneurial journey. Awesome. Book you'd recommend people read. So uh, this has been the, 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 I struggle because I go between two, but there's one that is my standout favorite book of, of but probably all time. It's called The Rise of Superman. It's by Stephen Kotler. And it's a wonderful book on the research around achieving flow states and the things that happen in these flow states. And it's really, uh, it studies, it, it's a study mostly of uh, extreme sports athletes but it's from a very uh, um, neurological standpoint and what's happening with the mind. And it's very entertaining. It's very informative, just a great, uh, great book. And then um, I know you asked me to recommend one, but the second one is the one, I think we talked about it uh, when we met in Santa Barbara, which is David Goggins can't hurt me. Yeah. Um, that has been my, my, the, I, I struggle between those two. They're both my, my favorite. And uh, um, Goggins is intense, but uh, great, uh, great audiobook actually is, is my favorite way to, uh, to do that. So. I think Goggins is very 
that book is really relevant for right now too, for mindset piece. And I actually have, I can look over, I can see Rise of Superman right there. Oh, and, fantastic, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm 100% on board with you. Movie or documentary you'd recommend people watch at this time? Yeah, um, this was the one that I, uh, uh, I, I, I'm a huge, huge movie person. Um, so I love them all so much. Uh, something that uh, I felt like, I feel like right now, um, real movies that really connect you with a, a deeper purpose or understanding is probably um, what I would recommend for people to do. Something that really um, can grab you and, and cause some kind of change in perspective. And uh, because it's top of mind, I just watched it the other night, the movie Just Mercy was a phenomenal, uh, I mean, the actors were phenomenal, of course, but the story is a true story. And um, it, it, it's heavily geared around uh, racism in the South and the things that have happened with prison systems and stuff in there. Um, but don't look at it like a political movie of any sort. I don't think that it really is. Uh, look at it as a human movie and just mm -hmm. look at how sometimes we can get caught in our own uh, our our own patterns that we were taught and we can take action as a result of that and i think this movie documents the extreme end of what can happen when those things are left unchecked for too long and it was a really good reminder for me just to go back and you know i always have these reminders but i i made a big post on it in in terms of racism and uh, it, it, it pulls up all sorts of things around forgiveness and grace and humanity and things like that. So that would be my uh, top of mind recommendation. Awesome, Josh. Everyone, again, whether you're a business owner or not, or you're looking into diving into the internet or you're an internet guru, dive into this because there is so much unbelievable practical wisdom and tools that Josh shared here from if you're a business owner, learning how to really care more about your customers and tell a story, which again, if you're watching this recording now, you should have seen more stories from me because I'm making the pledge to do it. And for people who are looking to, to jump online, here's an idea that just occurred. Again, simplifying it down and getting your feet wet. So using that Amazon affiliate, scroll through your news feed for a few minutes and look at what people are talking about. People are talking about toilet paper right now. They're talking about running out of the essentials. What if you just went over onto Amazon, you made a list of the 10 things you see your friends and family talking about the most that they're having a hard time ha finding. And you pull those affiliate links from Amazon and you just start sharing them with people and say, hey, here's some links to Amazon to get it. And people are talking about wanting to help one another out, help small businesses out. Well, you would be a small business owner. It's a great way to do it. And this isn't to say you're going to make a ton of money at first, but what it is to say is that if you take what Josh is talking about, you just begin and you get some, your feet wet, you're going to realize that that potential and that power is available for you out there to earn a earn additional income, have passive income, maybe create a whole new career for yourself by using the power of the internet and what's at your fingertips. And if anything, this has shown us is that in the, the world of the future, we're going to need to have some flexibility that business as we know it may not always go on. And the person who's going to be able to have some thinking outside of the box techniques can really be powerful in whatever you do, whatever your magic is. You've heard, heard me say this before. There is someone out there who will want to learn from you, who will benefit from it, and who will find value in it. So don't limit yourself by a title, but expand yourself by saying, what can I offer? What can I contribute? And Josh, you spoke so perfectly this today, man. I'm so grateful for you being here. This was absolutely incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And anything, uh, anything I can do to help what you're doing, I, I love what you're doing. I still see your stuff. I know we haven't chatted for a good number of months or so, but uh, um, uh, keep doing the good work out there, my friend. I, I appreciate that you exist in the world the way you do. So thank you for having me on. Thanks, Josh. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time on another edition of A Handful of Hope. Until then, live an extraordinary rest of your day. Bye-bye.